That's terrible. <laughs> you must be devastated. That was actor John Cryer on the hit CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men. Uh, Cryer now stars as Lex Luthor on the CW Supergirl, and he's among the long list of Hollywood celebrities who have been vocal critics of our lame duck president. Cryer hit the headlines on this particular issue after a 2016 interview when he compared Trump to his former co-star Charlie Sheen. Hindsight is 2020, and Cryer's words about a Trump presidency could not have been more prophetic. There is a, an interesting overlap between uh, how people... Charlie Sheen, yeah, let's Charlie just put Shane it out here. And, yeah. and Between Trump. Charlie and Donald Trump. I mean, there, there's an interesting... Mm -hmm. People like that he's willing to, to just say whatever foolishness comes to the top of his yeah. head. Foolishness, uh, Much word. foolishness. And, uh, wow. and it was, it's fascinating to watch because mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I don't want people to pick the president based on entertainment value. Because mm. I saw somebody spectacularly flame out and, and ruin everything that was good in their lives wow. by doing that. And mm. I don't want uh, somebody else to ruin everybody else's lives yeah. uh, by, 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 by coming that. to power that way. Ruining everybody else's lives. If only tens of millions of Americans had listened to one out of the two and a half men. This week, the outgoing president granted a series of controversial pardons and John Cryer tweeted out this in response. Wow, the gang's all here. He's pardoning members of his criminal organization, his corrupt GOP backers, and a guy involved in the massacre of 17 people. Here to talk about all of that and more is the actor himself, star of a show me and my kids love, CW Supergirl. Uh, John Cryer, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. John, we're exactly four weeks away from Donald Trump leaving office. How are you feeling right now as someone who's been viscerally opposed to him from the very beginning, someone who was fighting with trolls last year on Twitter over the need to impeach him? Uh, well, obviously, uh, I feel grateful that the nation has spoken uh, and that they largely understand uh, how malignant uh, a force he's been in, in office. Um, I, I do think that, 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 you know, finally his popularity polls are starting to slip. It's like, wow, is this all it took him <laughs> actually losing the presidency? Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 understood, I, I understood even at the time people's impulse to give him a chance. You know, um, I, I think Hollywood had sold them this uh, vision of this guy as a brilliant billionaire uh, businessman. And I think people said, yeah, let's let him have a, sh have a shot. Um, but obviously that was not true. It was always a, a, a fiction that was created by Hollywood. And, uh, and people are right to be mad at Hollywood for foisting that on them. Uh, you know, I, I think they're not wrong. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that, yeah. that uh, you know, because the, the, the BS engine that, that propelled Trump into office is sputtering somewhat lately, that we can have some sort of uh, uh, reconciliation with what actually occurred during his presidency. Indeed, I hope we do as well. Although the, the truth of the matter is not enough people have been uh, blunt enough or honest enough about just how bad Trump has been. Why I enjoy uh, following you on Twitter is you're always very, very uh, uh, plain spoken uh, about our currently lamed up president. And you haven't just picked fights with Trump, uh, but also his enablers. You had a row with a very Trumpy Republican congressman, uh, Matt Gates of Florida on Twitter. After you criticized him for bringing a Holocaust denier to the State of the Union, he fired back with a tweet saying Charlie Sheen carried two and a half men as if being a co-star on a TV show is worse than having a white supremacist as your guest to the State of the Union. Uh, the show of course lasted long after Charlie Sheen's departure and as you pointed out to Gates you even won an Emmy uh, during that period but John is it kind of bizarre for you as an actor who's been around since the 80s and now here you are in 2020 going back and forth with a congressman about your TV show. We live in weird times. We absolutely do, um, and and I, you know, and I stepped into. You could see on that that clip from the reel. I was stepping into politics very tentatively. I don't, I, you know, I like seeing entertainers and just enjoying them for their artistry and their work. I love John Voight. I, I think he's a fantastic actor. You know, uh, uh, I don't want to think about the, the the bizarre rants that he goes on. You know, uh, I want to just enjoy the the yes. art he creates. 
Um, exactly. So I get why people feel sort of resentful towards celebrities who are getting into politics. You know, uh, um, uh, they, uh, they also perceive that there's a power imbalance. And that's fair. That's an absolutely fair um, uh, uh, criticism. That being said, we're also Americans. Uh, and and when we see when I in, in particular with Trump, because I could see that the entertainment media establishment was being weaponized, um, that I felt like okay, I have to step in and say something at this point. Uh, and Matt Gates is you know he's a clown. He you know he doesn't even believe half the, the stupidity he, he spouts. You know he's yeah. uh, uh, that that 100%. that's what makes I think this is just a game to him. I'm also amazed because his head seems to get larger, but his face seems to get smaller, and I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, Trump this week pardoned a bunch of Blackwater war criminals. Uh, you are someone who's known not just for acting, not just for slamming Trump, but you've also been involved with the Undisclosed podcast about wrongful convictions in America. And knowing what you know now about nonviolent offenders who are in prison, uh, that must make Trump pardoning war criminals while leaving so many more deserving people behind bars even more frustrating for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's enraging. I mean, in this particular case, I actually that I was in error somewhat on that um, uh, uh, on that tweet because because he actually pardoned four people who were involved with the massacre of seventeen people. So uh, um, you know, war crime. These these are war crimes that were adjudicated. This wasn't an argument that they were saying, oh, you know, there was uh, the prosecutors held back evidence or anything. There was no procedural reason to pardon these people. There was uh, the 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 reason was to just, you know, it's it's a, a right wing fever dream that, uh, you know, we were, you know, these people are valiant warriors who got, you know, crushed by the system or something. That's just not the case in this in this particular incident. You know, our, our criminal yeah. justice system, you know, does need, uh, um, uh, you know, like any huge bureaucracy, it's 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 feeding on itself in many ways, uh, and and a lot of regular human beings are being just eaten up by it. And thankfully, the media and, and thankfully, the Undisclosed podcast has brought a lot of these stories to light. And, and, and the, the narrative does appear to be changing in the, in the, public, um, in the public understanding. Yeah. And, and based on what you learned through doing that, through hosting that uh, podcast series, how, um, how urgently do you think Joe Biden should tackle criminal justice reform? How urgently do you think he will tackle it? Well, it's tough because m much of what happens with wrongful convictions is happening on a state level. So the federal government actually has limited amounts of, of input Good in point. that. Um, and also a lot of it happens at uh, a lot of these stories, when you get into the nuts and bolts of them, happen on, uh, on just the level of police misconduct uh, and the level of juries misunderstanding uh, how junk science that, that's being presented in courts. Um, and the entertainment industry itself has been portraying stories from the point of view of uh, cops for forever, <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's and I love cops and you know I I, I respect the work they do. Um, it's 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 scary work, um, but there as in any huge government bureaucracy, there's people that do it well and people that really don't. Uh, and uh, and so you know the, the 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 horror is when human beings fall through the cracks and and are robbed of their lives um and their families because of this that that type of thing so uh, i i think the joe biden administration has so many things on its plate um in terms of just just bringing some basic accountability to back to the federal government that's going to be a huge uh, you know yeah. a huge challenge then climate we got climate change that's terrifying uh, you yeah. know uh, and so they've got so they've got such huge, uh, uh, you know, Trump has left such a mess yes, they do. Uh, uh, for for Joe Biden to clean up that, um, you know, I, I, I it's, you know, criminal it's a hor it's a on a state level. I, I it's a horrible thing to have to inherit for any new president. Before we run out of time, I do have to ask about Superman, uh, Supergirl and <laughs> Superman, uh, the two series on CW that are coming. In Superman 4, you played Lenny Luthor, uh, which I didn't realize. I had to think back to that, my childhood, the nephew of Lex Luthor. Now in Supergirl on CW, you're playing Lex Luthor himself. What has that been like? Now, that's a journey from nephew to the main villain himself. <laughs> um, that's been actually incredibly satisfying for me, way too satisfying for uh, frankly, an adult, I, I, you know, for a 14-year-old boy, 
Uh, it would make total sense to get this much uh, uh, satisfaction out of it. But I'm an adult. Uh, really, I should not be geeking out as much as I do. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I've loved the show. I've had a great time. Um, it, Superman 4 was a bit of a misfire. I don't know if you recall. It was the last of the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. Um, it, they, it, it ended up being uh, sort of legendary as in terms of a flop. Uh, of how these uh, superhero movies can go because it basically ended the Superman franchise. So when they gave me a shot to play Lex Luthor, it was kind of my chance to fix it, to sort of fix the, the legacy. Uh, and, uh, and it's been amazing. The fans have been incredible, uh, the Supergirl fans. Uh, I've loved the writing on the show. Um, and playing it is just, uh, you know, cause yes. it, it, you can get away with everything because you're a supervillain. That's what you do. And you do it so well, um, and we've enjoyed watching you. Uh, don't worry, those of us who are also adults have been geeking out watching you geek out on screen. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today, John. We're out of time, uh, but we really appreciate you coming on the show. Happy holidays. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.